Hey guys, today I'm with Frederick, who is a YouTuber and a student who studied Chinese in Tongji University and Tianjin University in China. And he's now an architecture student at Tongji University. He has over 30 videos on YouTube, which includes really interesting vlogs like in Paris, in Beijing, and uh, even carnivals in Panama, as well as gaming videos. His two most popular videos are A Day in Tongji University and a very informative video on Tianjin University, which he co-produced with a friend. We will link these videos and his YouTube channel in the description below. So today we'll be discussing about his experience studying in China. Welcome, Frederick. How are you? Hey, thank you. I'm really good. Can you tell us a bit more about yourself? What are you currently doing? I think I can explain it. Like, I have to go back in the time a little bit. I was studying in China, and I actually I'm studying in China from, uh, from Panama. But I came back to Panama in February because of the COVID-19. And I continue taking my classes online of Chinese. And now I start my major that is architecture in Tongji University. I think it's a really good architecture university around the world. So yeah. I haven't done so much YouTube right now because of the situation. I think we cannot travel that much like before. Also, I cannot go to so many places because here in my country, we still have a lot of places closed because of government and and this this kind of stuff mm -hmm. but yeah that's why in now um so why did you decide to study in china of all of the places why did you choose to go to the other side of the world to study to be sincere i have been interested in china since i was a kid i don't know why uh, when i was like around seven years old i was watching this this cartoon was called Ni Hao Kailan. Oh. And I remember going going to the supermarket. The supermarket, the owner was a Chinese, a Chinese man. Uh -huh. And that was the first time I said Ni Hao in my life. I was like, oh, you can speak Chinese. And I was like, yeah, I can speak Chinese. I, I mean, I was just able to say Ni Hao. But after that, I I don't know why, but I was always interested in, in the Chinese culture also. Because here in Panama, the food is really famous, the Chinese food is really famous. I was really interested also in the food of China. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, you see all these things in, in the movies, the Great Wall, the Tiananmen, and also Shanghai, like this really gigantic city. And yeah, I was really uh, excited about it. Then when I was in 11th grade of high school, I made a work about China in, in my English class, we have to choose a country and explain their culture and some things of, of them, also food and land, everything. And I remember I made it about China. And then when I, I, I was in some competitions when I was in school and when I was in, in the high school. Mm -hmm. And after that, I really wanted to study overseas. Actually, before, before the year 2017, I wasn't thinking in China just because China didn't have an embassy here in Panama. We had an embassy of, of Taiwan. Mm. But then we, we, how to say, we finished our relation with Taiwan and we started relations with China. And after that, I saw this big opportunity to go to China. I saw they were giving the scholarships to the students. And I went to the embassy and tried to see, just, you know, just, just to see what happens. I was like, okay, I don't live in the capital of my country, not in the capital, I live in another city. Okay. And I was like, okay, I will go to the capital and I will go to the embassy to see what happens. And I remember they gave me this, like, come in, in May. I went in January, they told me, like, come in May and take, like, your... your curriculum vitae and I went there and that day and there was a really long line and I made the line and then when when I entered to the to the embassy and I started to talk with the ambassador he was really impressed about about me and, and about my my curriculum vitae and after that I just have two more interviews and then my scholarship was approved to come to go to China to study architecture was wow. I think was a really amazing uh, opportunity so you decided to study architecture before you studied Chinese? Yeah, I was studying architecture here in my country. 
I had uh, the opportunity to study one semester of architecture here mm -hmm. because I wasn't sure if I was going uh, to study ab abroad or I was going to stay here in my country. So I started and I studied one semester. And after that, like at the end of the semester was, was the time when the embassy approved my scholarship. Okay. But I, I have to say, I, I forgot a lot of things of architecture in, because I, I, two years have passed since I, that happened, since I entered the university here in Panama, yeah. Right, yeah, also architecture is not easy, right? Uh, I think it's, it's kind of complicated, you know, just, just to remember the way to draw, but I think architecture is not so much about how you draw, it's more about... Creativity, <laughs> is it? Like... Design. Yeah, yeah, creativity. It's more about your creativity. If you have the creativity or just to think in how to design one place, how, how to make a place look amazing, I think that's all. After that, you just have to learn how to draw it and how to express it, you know? Because the most important part, I think you can draw excellent, but if you don't have the creativity to, to imagine a place, to mm -hmm. think like, oh, this place will look amazing if, if you put like this or like that, Right. You cannot study architecture, you know. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. So you have studied Chinese in those two universities, Tongji University and Tianjin University. Yeah. What would you say, um, you know, is the difference between these two universities? I think uh, my, my studies of Chinese in Tianjin University and Tongji University were not like the same. I, I had really, really different uh, programs in, in in these two universities. Tianjin, I have the CSE program mm -hmm. that you have to study uh, Chinese the first semester and then the second semester you have to study Chinese, uh, scientific Chinese, also chemistry or physics and math in Chinese. Wow. And in Tongji University, I just have to study uh, Chinese. So I think the experience for me in Dong University was way easier than in Tianjin University because as a student that don't know anything about, about Chinese, mm. this is a big step to study all these things in Chinese. But if we see from the point of view of the universities itself, I think Tianjin University is a really organized university. They know everything about every student. If you have any problem, like, or if they are not clear about anything, they contact you like direct to you, they call you like, hey, are you, are you Fred? And uh, we see that you haven't sent uh, this thing or that thing and you have to send it before this specific date. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to remember it. But I, I think Tongue University is, is a really good university, but they, they are not so focused in, in this part of, of, the, of the things. But they, they are most focused on the performance of the students, I think. Mm -hmm. And also about the university itself, like the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I think Tianyi University is, is, is a beautiful place. They have these really big lakes. If you are in the first year of your studying, I think this is one of the best options to study Chinese because you will feel like, uh, you, even if you're in a city, you will feel like really relaxed because if you are stressed, you can just go to the lake and sit there mm -hmm. and breathe and think and uh, you just like feel uh, liberated. Enjoy the landscape, yeah. Yeah, but also it's really cold there. So everything will depend, I think, in the person. If they like the, the cold mm -hmm. weather, they can go to, to Tianjin and if they don't like, they can go to Shanghai. But there is summer, right, in Tianjin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, really hot, I think. Mm -hmm. Really, like, I remember. When I was in Tianjin, I stayed some days of the summer because I came back to my country in the summer, in the summer vacation to see my family. But mm -hmm. the days I stayed there, I remember uh, that some days I was going, like I was in my room and I just go to the balcony to see if, you know, down of my building, uh, you can see like there was some places of food so you can see the line from my balcony. So I was going to the balcony to see if there was a long line or a short line to go to buy food. <laughs> and I remember wow, that it was okay. so hot. Uh -huh. I did all so hot. So I, I had to watch really fast and then come back to, to, the, to, the, to the room. Also, I think uh, Tianjin, 
don't rain that much. They don't have mm -hmm. rain. There was rain two or three times, but Shanghai have a lot of rain. Okay, yeah. I see. Yeah, I was a student at Beijing, so it's very close to Tianjin, and it's basically the same. In summer, it's crazy, crazy hot, like so dry, so hot. And it's yeah. a big difference uh, compared to Malaysia because it rains here all the time. It's a tropical country, so it was very different going there. You know, my skin was dry and everything. I had to, mm -hmm. you know, change a lot of my habits to adapt to it. I, I understand that situation because Panama is also a tropical country. We don't have winter. We don't have uh, the four any seasons. of the four seasons. Yeah, we just have like dry season and, and raining season. So, so um, what was your average day like when you were studying uh, there, like in Tongji University, maybe? When I was studying in Tongji University, uh, my day was, I think, was normal. I... I was part of the baseball team, so some days when I have baseball classes, uh, I had to wake up like around 7 a.m. to go to class from 8.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. And after that, I had classes of baseball from 1 p.m. to 5 or 6 p.m. And also, I was going to eat like normal time before going to class. I eat something in the in the canteen of the university. And also, you know, the, the canteens of the university is really good. I, I have heard that the canteen of Tongi University is famous because their food is, is really good. So I was most of the time in my first food going to eat in the canteens and at night I used to eat outside because I used to eat really late so I the canteen was already closed some days if it was open they just have like some part open not, not like the rice and yeah. I like to eat rice so I used to go outside to buy rice yeah, yeah. but other days uh I had my classes again, like the same, the same classes, like from eight to twelve p.m. And after that, uh, I used to go to the, you know, Tony University have uh, a lot of uh, libraries, so you can go to the library to study. I used to go to the library, like mm -hmm. two or three hours, do my homework, and then go back to my room, and maybe play some PlayStation or something. Also, some days I used to go to the gym because the university have a gym inside. Mm -hmm. So I used to go to the gym, train a little bit. And then at 10 p.m., I have to, to go to a little practice of baseball, like of one hour. And then just to go back to my room and sleep. I think it was, was really fun because, you know, it's, it's not like you are just stuck studying something. You are also doing things you like, you know. Yeah. And some days, you know... I like to, to, to make YouTube videos. When I have time some days or maybe sometimes in the weekend, I used to go to, to different parts of Shanghai to record some things. I remember the last video I was recording was about uh, Nanjing Donglu, how to say it in, in English, is the Nanjing East Road. Mm -hmm. uh, and I used to go there to record, but I, I didn't finish that video because because I, I don't know, I think was because I was a little bit busy oh. with the basic classes and, and stuff, but also because I, I, I used to travel to all different places and I was like doing a lot of videos at the same time. Okay. So I, I didn't have the time to finish that. One. Yeah. But that was my average day in, in Tongji. Sometimes I also used to go, Tongji had two campuses. Sometimes mm -hmm. I used to go to the other campus to practice baseball it sounds very active your lifestyle there so yeah what about now like you're having online classes now how would you describe the online classes from Tongji I think some classes mm -hmm. is just the same as being in the in the class with the teacher mm -hmm. but some other classes are not like than normal because uh for, for example, let's speak about the design class. My design class is with a teacher and they are just like just like us. Like the teacher is in the screen watching us and talking to us. Mm -hmm. And we're just asking him questions or uh, he's teaching direct to us. But for example, in some other classes, like 
for example, the math class. Mm. The teacher is teaching in, in a classroom in China to the person that are in that classroom. And they are also doing a live stream at the same time, showing us uh, what's... So I think that's a little bit harder for us because um, it's not like the teacher is not teaching to us, but we don't have the opportunity to ask the teacher what, what we don't understand, like, like go to the teacher and ask him directly in the class when he's explaining. For example, if, if you're explaining me something right now and I don't understand something, I, I just can say like, hey, wait, I don't understand this. Can you can you explain me this part? In this way, we cannot do it. We cannot do that. And also, we cannot study with our classmates because mm -hmm. uh, most of them are in, are in China. So I think the classes that the teachers in the ones the teachers are teaching direct to us is really, really good classes. Uh, I think maybe it's better than the classes uh, like in the classroom because, you know, you don't have to spend time going to the class. Also, you don't have to spend time going back to your room. Also, you don't have to spend time in a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. And also, you're, you're in your home, you know. So it's a little bit easier. And sometimes uh, the teacher teaches you more things than than the things that he will teach you if you are in the in the normal classroom. From my point of view, I, I think that way. That's nice. Uh, this is a question that many students are curious to know about, um, which is about the budget. So how much roughly is your budget when you were living in Shanghai? I had a scholarship of 2,500 yuan. That's around $3,000. $300, I think. I mean, not 3,000. And... <laughs> If you if you eat in the in the university canteen, mm -hmm. this will be just perfect for you. Also, I didn't have to pay a, a room because the university gives you the room for free if you have the CSF scholarship. So it's not like I had to spend in the room. So usually my spending of money was around 1,500 the months that I just eat inside of the university. And it's not like uh, eating at the university is not like that because the food in the university was really, really nice. Mm. Like, really nice. If you go outside, maybe you can spend a little bit more. For example, if you spend 10 yuan in the university inside buying food and a drink, outside you can spend around 20 or 25 yuan. Sometimes, I mean, if you go to, to something like not then expensive also not than cheap but if you want to eat uh, expensive food also you can eat it but also you can get really really good options of food like eastern food with good prices it's not like because Shanghai is a big city you will just spend a lot of money you know you can find a lot of cheap options and good options also I remember doing this like buying food inside the university things like that you also can spend more money like buying things for you in Taobao. Taobao is this, this app to buy things in China. Mm -hmm. So you can spend more, more money there like buying some things because it's really cheap also. So I think it's not that hard as some people think that study, study outside of your country, go to study in China, like, like something expensive. I think for someone that is planning to study, for example, architecture, like me, there is a lot of universities in another different countries that are not as good as Tongyi University, for example, and some other universities of China, and they are more expensive. I don't know what, why this is like this, but I have seen that uh, these, these years that some, for example, some universities in the United States or maybe in Europe are more expensive than some universities in China, but the universities in China are better. So I think for someone that wants to get a really high quality education and also have like cheap or, or not cheap, but not than expensive as and different as in different countries, China is a really, really good option. Even even here in Panama. Here in Panama we have some private universities that are not like like good universities as my as my point of view because mm -hmm. here in Panama the, the best universities I think is the public university but some private universities 
are not as good as Chinese universities, and they are way expensive, way expensive that, than these Chinese universities. But I think also, if you go to China, uh, mm. you have the opportunity to experience a different culture and meet yes. people from all over the world. Yeah. So I think it, this is like, you don't have to spend that much, like maybe in food, 1,500 yuan, uh, maybe 2,000 yuan per month. That's like a normal price and it's even a cheap price for some countries. And you can have a really good quality of life. But then if you have to rent an apartment, yeah, it's a little bit different because apartments is like you have to spend more yeah. in the rent, things like that. Yeah. Especially in Shanghai or in Beijing, those very populated cities, that's how it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm curious to ask you, like, uh, in terms of what you said just now, like, the classes are not as good. Like, was it from reviews from friends or, like, how, how do you know, like, to compare the classes of, like, U.S. universities, for example, like you said, as compared to Chinese? In what terms did you mean? You know, uh, when I was going to China, the, the thing I saw to decide which university I was going to choose Mm. was the world ranking of universities okay so for example uh, here in panama there is a university i don't remember the name but i know the price of tony university is forty nine thousand yuan per per year i think okay. i don't i'm not sure how much money is that in dollars if, if, let me check Just give me <laughs> one second. seven thousand five hundred ish yeah yeah so the year in Tony University is around seven thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. Or I, I don't remember if it was the year or was the full career. I think it's the year. I think it should be year. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But here in Panama, uh, it's like five thousand dollars per year. And Tony University is the 18th best university of architecture of architecture around the world wow. and the university we have here in panama is not even in the ranking so and then if you want to choose uh, some other university in in the ranking then for example in some different things mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's also like that like the the prices are maybe equal or uh, I, I mean panama is not expensive country mm -hmm. so we don't have so expensive university but if you go to a different country like in europe or the united states or, or canada they are uh, more expensive way more expensive than, than panama so their universities are also more expensive and if you see the world rankings sometimes you can find these universities in lower places than these universities in china I remember uh, my girlfriend wanted to, to go with me to study to a different country because uh, China is kind of far. And we were looking for universities, but I wasn't able to find a really, really good university outside of China with a price, mm -hmm. like, like with a good price. Everything was just so expensive. And, when, and then when you try to look for them in the rankings, yeah they are like in lower positions okay so that's why i think that way and that's you can see that also in some different areas like civil engineer maybe medicine yeah yeah that's why i think that way okay um so how would you rate your overall experience on a scale of one to ten in china i would say uh i would say an eight yeah an eight why why an eight? where did the two points go i think uh maybe because uh i don't see it like 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 these two points ago i see like eight points taking like 10 points of, of like the best experience and like just not as hard as <laughs> learning chinese i think this is eight because uh everything i think i i really enjoyed this the two years I was in China, mm -hmm. and actually right now I'm just waiting for the for the government to make the international students go back to China. Yeah. So I, I really like my experience there uh, because of the food, because of the friends I made. Also, 
because you know all the experience all the things you can find there just to be in this big country and have the opportunity to go like to places with the snow to deserts to beaches everything is just really fun but for me it's a night because when i went when i went to china it's not i think it's not because of china but most because of me mm -hmm. when i went to china i wasn't able to speak in english okay so therefore I wasn't, for me, it was really, really hard to learn Chinese when I went there because I wasn't able to, to speak in English. I had to translate everything from English to Spanish, then learn everything, translating all the things that they give me from Chinese to English to Spanish. And it was like really complicated for me the first year. And I remember, uh, and I think it's not just for me, it's for a lot of people, like they, their first months, They are just like so, so stressed because yeah. all these things like, oh my God, how I will learn all the, all these, like it's, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot of things you have to process. Definitely. And most, and most for me, because I, I haven't been, I wasn't a good person with languages. I wasn't, I really mm -hmm. wasn't good as in with languages. I studied English all my high school. We all, we always had an English class. And when I went to China, I still wasn't like, able to speak in English just like in the normal way you know for example if you tell me something I was like <laughs> what, what? Uh, that was like for right. me English we had to, to listen a lot of times and trying to, mm -hmm. to process mm -hmm. what were what were you saying then how to reply mm -hmm. when I went to China I had to learn Ch English then Chinese mm -hmm. prepare for the exams and you know it's, it's really hard knowing you have like all these really cool things to experience mm -hmm. outside of, of the university but you have to stay inside and study and study and study Chinese for at least uh, the first six months after that you know it's like you can relax a little bit you can mm -hmm. like when you are starting that like to get the Chinese in your mind it's like yeah. a little bit easier for you because then you can process the information faster mm -hmm. But the first months is a really hard experience if you are going to study Chinese, like like me, like I want to study Chinese. Definitely. And plus, you studied Chinese like from English to Chinese, right? Or was it Spanish yeah. to Chinese? English to Chinese. From English to Chinese, yeah. That's crazy. And <laughs> look at you now. You're so fluent in English. This is, this is incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. Yeah, for Mm -hmm. I remember the first months, thing that helped me to learn English were my friends because uh, I had countrymates, but the friends of my countrymates, they wasn't able to speak in Spanish. They just were able to speak in English. So yeah. I was always like the one in the conversation that wasn't able to speak with them. Oh. I was always like, hey, can, can, you tell, can you tell them that I think the, this, 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 this. Yeah. And they used to translate for me and then translate back and i think it was really annoying and i think you can you cannot have a conversation like a really fluid conversation if you're just like translating everything so after that i started to learn english and watch all the things in english mm -hmm. and then i think after just two months i was able to speak in english Just two months. Yeah, because I was like, I was, I changed everything in my life to English in those two months. Like my phone was in English, yeah. my computer was in English. All the things I said, like all the things I, I used to watch like in YouTube or these things, everything in English with, with subtitles in English. And if I wasn't able to understand, mm -hmm. I just like stop the video and read the, read the subtitles, try to understand the most as I can. Sometimes, even with my friends, that my, my Spanish speaker friends, yeah, I used to speak in English with them, and they, they were like, hey, Fred, why are you speaking in English with us? And I was like, uh, because I, I need to learn English, and I know if mm -hmm. I stop talking in English, I will yeah. just, okay, like, yeah. yeah. So to our audience out there, as you can see, nothing is impossible if you really try hard. So a lot of people are struggling with studying Chinese, and I think you're living proof that, you know, it's, It's not impossible. You just got to put your mind into it. You just got to do the hard work. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so um, finally, do you have any advice for students who are planning to go to China? 
Okay, advices I have for students that are going to China. First, life in China is really, really good. But the first months, you have to work hard and you don't have to just like go for the easy way. You know, in China or in the cities I used to live, there were a lot of clubs like, and mm -hmm. they always for, for students and for foreigners, usually the entrance was for free. And a lot of people want to go. And sometimes you go and then you go again, and then you go again. And one day you just, you just realize that you have been going so much to clubs and you haven't done homework and you haven't do a lot of things. So I think one part is like, just to focus the first months you have to study hard because if you don't study hard the first months the last months all the last months will be hell yeah you will don't know anything and you will be confused with the things they teach you at the beginning it's, it's really hard and i experienced that because my friends all of my friends had one year in china they were able to speak chinese already but i wasn't and sometimes uh, like some part of my of my time in China, I, I made that. I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. You can go, go to clubs for free and everything's for free. And you can uh, go there and go there and just travel around. And at the end, at the last months, I discovered that I was like losing my opportunity to, to study Chinese. Mm. So the first thing you have to put in your mind is just to focus in studying Chinese. After some months, you will find a way to learn Chinese really fast. And also you will find a way to, to do your homework faster. And when you discover all these things, you can start like to going outside and enjoying because if you go outside first, it will be harder for you. If you study first, then you just can be more relaxed all the time. But if not, it's, it's really hard. It's, really really hard another advice i have uh, don't eat outside that much also don't eat in fancy places that have like eastern food because i think the food in those eastern restaurants is not as good as as you will think but they are really really expensive and then i mean if you have a scholarship if you don't have a scholarship and you have your own money okay but if you have like limited money you can just eat in your university or maybe in Muslim restaurants. Muslim restaurants are really good and they are cheap also. And sometimes you can go to some restaurants, but you, you have to do some research because in China, you will find a lot of uh, Eastern restaurants, but not all the restaurants are good. And maybe you will spend like the money of, of half of the month. And then you will be struggling those last days to see how you will survive. Maybe you will borrow... You will take some money for your friend from your friends or things like that. I think then you have to pay that. Yeah. Just so, check the menu before you enter a restaurant, maybe. Check yeah. <laughs> and I think the last advice: uh, try to save money to travel mm -hmm. in your free days, because you know something that really stick in your mind and in your experience when you are of, of China is the places you were. For example, uh, once when I was in China, I went to the beach. And I think that's one of the best experience I have when I went to China. Nice. And sadly, I, I, I didn't make a video of that time, oh. but I, I went through a really nice place. It was called Beida mm. and in a hotel called Aranya and it was a really nice place. We had like, we entered to a marathon, we had to run and it was was really fun. I, I didn't travel that much. Sometimes I went to Beijing, things like that. But I think I had to travel more. I didn't travel that much. So I think one of the things you can do is like save money and when you have free days, you can travel maybe to Shanghai, maybe to Beijing, maybe you can go to Inner Mongolia to see the dessert. Maybe you can go to Hainan, that is really, really nice place. 
have a really nice beach. Yeah, that those things will stick with in your experience, and then you can say like, oh, I went to, I I travel all China, and I have pictures everywhere. Yeah. I know all these things. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that I would recommend the most. Yeah, China is so big. There's just I don't think one person is able to explore everything in just like four years or so. But yeah, it's just just get yourself out there, right? Experience yeah. all the fun things. Yeah, that's great. This is a great interview. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think we've reached the end of this interview. Thank you so much, Brett, for doing this interview with me. Um, yeah, I hope the best for you uh, in your architectural studies, and hope that you and your family stay safe throughout this time. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.